morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together today on this feast day of St. Teresa of Calcutta, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have taught your church to keep all the heavenly commandments by love of, God, of you as God and love of neighbor, Grant that, practicing the works of charity, after the example of Blessed St. Teresa of Calcutta, we may be worthy to be numbered among the blessed in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. For God did not destine us for wrath, but to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, as indeed you do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A 
great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man with, a, with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about the, his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of you ever have felt what we can describe as this extreme longing of the heart? Okay, good. Some of you raising your hand. Some of you like looking at me like I got six heads. But I would dare to say that each of us have felt at one point in our life or another this kind of extreme longing, this almost like aloneness and just this desire for our hearts to be filled. And it exists in all of us because of the fact that somewhere along the way, the Lord will permit it, mainly because of the fact he wants us to understand one very deep truth. We're not made for here alone. We're made for more. And no one maybe experienced this more in a, full, in a greater and full, more fuller way than the saint we celebrate today in St. Teresa of Calcutta. Because St. Teresa felt that, but multiplied in a very deep way. So how can we say that? Well, her story starts out with, again, she, wasn't, she had, hadn't founded the Missionaries of Charity yet, but had this deep experience of God, such that this mystical experience drew her out of herself to leave the Loretto sisters and go and found these missionaries of charity to go serve the poorest of the poor in the most, with some of the most difficult play, uh, circumstances on earth in Calcutta, India. This was the call that St. Teresa entered into. But it wasn't enough for her to just stay there. During her time, she made a private vow to her spiritual directors that were kept over many years. And this vow was very simple that she would share in the words that Jesus shares from the cross, his, his second to last words before he hands over his, his spirit. And the words are, I thirst. This, these two words are adorned on every chapel in any convent that the missionaries of charity have around the world. I thirst. And what St. Teresa came to understand about this, and maybe even intuited as she made this gift of herself to the Lord in a very particular way, that it, that thirst is not something of a physical nature. Rather, it's a longing for communion with us. Imagine for a moment, you're our Lord, and you are preparing your heart to give yourself over for the salvation of the world. And in the midst of all of that, you are under such tremendous stress that you start sweating blood. There, have been, there has been much ink spilled over the years, going back to, again, the times of the early church, 
of what it was that was causing Jesus such tremendous stress. One of the theories is this, that Jesus was able to see the totality of everything that would happen after his sacrifice, and there would still be people who ultimately rejected his salvific plan. But his heart longed for them, just as it longs now for you and I, to be in deep communion with him. And on the cross, in those final moments, before he hands over his spirit, before he says the words, it is finished, and again, scripture records that he bows his head and hands it, himself over to the Father. It's interesting that he's feeling that longing for us. And St. Teresa writes very poignantly in our, in our own memoirs, and again, in her own words that we have to this day, talking about the fact that that deep longing was basically what she lived in for the better part of 50 years. We've experienced it here and there, maybe for a brief time, and we know how unfun it is, correct? Some of you are sitting there going, oh no, it's wicked fun, Father, I love it, you know. Well, to a degree, St. Teresa did. Because she turned herself wholly over to God in this very powerful way. And for the better part of her life, maybe sands a couple of moments here and there. I think that happened during the course of that 50 years. And when I do mean a when I say a couple, I mean like maybe two instances and that's it. So I don't know about you, but two instances over 50 years is going to be a little bit of a tough run. But she turned herself over and look what God did. Look at how many people her life impacted. From the poorest of the poor in Calcutta, those she could get to, those again she continued to try to serve, all the way to people around the world drawing them in to serve these people as best they could. She herself felt God was very much over there and she was very much over here, yet she stayed faithful to our Lord in and through her way of life, her plan of her, her rule of life, if you will, her plan of love, of living out this gospel message each day. By staying faithful to it, even when she couldn't quote unquote feel that presence of God, we all know from the outside looking in that God was all over her. That didn't stop people from attacking her, for launching blistering criticisms against her. Such to the point where some people really kind of went after her. But then again, didn't that happen with our Lord? Didn't our Lord have blistering attacks leveled against him? Both verbally and even again, eventually, when he turned, over him, he turned himself over you know, for the passion, all of the attacks that came in a physical sense too. I mean, her reputation took a run at points. There were many, many critics. We could go through them, but that's a whole other story. The point is this, dear friends. If you live the gospel message, if you follow Jesus Christ, if you take the catechism itself, look at it and say, I am going to make this my way of life, you better prepare for the cross to come. There is no other way this is happening. We try to basically sanitize Christianity into this little thing of like, oh, I'm just going to do good and everybody's going to like me and everything else. I don't know what you're looking at, dear friends, but the path of Jesus Christ was not that. It was difficult. It was a struggle. He's constantly crying out after even showing his divinity to his apostles. He comes down the hill and the, other, and the rest of the crew is having trouble and he goes, oh, faithless generation, how long am I going to be with you? Understand, dear friends, this is not an easy road. And we try to sometimes put on the blinders and just say, well, let's make it all nice and special and we don't have to worry about everything. It's all going to be smooth sailing. With due respect, look at the history of, the Christi of Christianity. Look at the history of the saints of the church. 
They struggled. They battled. They poured themselves out to bring Jesus Christ to people in a world that was not exactly always welcoming. As a matter of fact, often it was quite hostile. But here's the thing that changes the game for all of us. You also notice something secondarily in that battle. They were at peace. Whether it's St. Teresa herself, whether it's John Paul II, whether it's the saints going back through the Middle Ages, the early church, especially when the persecution meant you could ultimately lose your life in an instant. The common denominator among those who have turned themselves over to Jesus Christ and lived the gospel message is they are at peace. That the exterior th uh, circumstances of the world do not harm the interior peace that they have within which is why they can do unbelievable things in the face of true chaos. It's because they're in communion with our Lord. And even when the Lord feels distant, they have faith that he is right there with them. That's what Teresa lived out. That's what the saints teach all of us. So my question then, dear friends, is what about us? What about us who sit here this morning in our journeys and the Lord asks us to step out in faith? Are we prepared in whatever mission that the Lord is putting on our hearts? And believe you me, you still have one, even if you think it's like, well, I'm like pretty far down the road, Father. It's, you know, I gotta be, I'm like, I'm probably done, right? You absolutely not. You're in this game, dear friends. Because you still have the gift of prayer. And no matter where you are in that journey, that gift of prayer makes you important to this journey. Because there are many in our world who aren't praying. And your intercessory prayers might be the fit difference of their hearts being awakened to what the Lord wants to do in theirs as well. always in this ball game and we are always called to serve in those corporal and spiritual works of mercy however the Lord is tugging at your heart to serve with that in mind this morning dear friends we ask for this saint's intercession as we pray together Saint Teresa of Calcutta pray for us Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. That the baptized may proclaim Jesus as God's Holy One, we pray to the Lord. Lord that every nation may welcome God's messengers, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the poor may hear and receive the good news of salvation, we pray to the Lord. That those suffering the burdens of physical or mental illness may be set free, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that we may rejoice in the one who speaks with authority, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the dead may take their place at the heavenly feast, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our As we lift up a living intention for, Mary, uh, for healing for Mary Ellen Putnam, the prayer of this liturgy. Let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts.
We pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, on this feast day of St. Teresa of Calcutta, we ask that our hearts continue to grow in love of you and of neighbor, that we may serve you as, de as you desire through the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer to you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of blessed St. Teresa of Calcutta, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress stress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
on you stay we told this back a tabundi Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends. And now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed St. Teresa of Calcutta, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, and prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.